Director Kei Chihara is among the most prolific animation directors we have covered on Cinema Nippon to date. His career spans decades in the roles of writer, animator, and director, though you would be forgiven for not immediately recognizing this. You see, Hara has made waves in recent years with his feature films Miss Hokusai, Colorful, and Birthday Wonderland. However, the bulk of his filmography lasting from the late 1980s until the mid-2000s was spent working on both Doraemon and Crayon Shinchan, as well as smaller series like Esper Mami and Chimpui. Given the recent attention Hara has received both in Japan and in the West for his and his team's imaginative visual style, it only makes sense that viewers have begun to look to his storied past. Thankfully, those who don't want to sink several hundred hours into either of these respective franchises are in luck. It may surprise some viewers to learn that Hara's more creatively independent period of filmmaking began more than a decade ago with the 2007 animated film Summer Days with Ku. Released for the first time in America by G-Kids and Shout Factory, Summer Days with Ku is a hulking two and one half hour film. It deals with a child, Koichi, finding a kappa inside a hardened brick of mud, who has been buried underground for roughly 150 years. Waking up in modern times, the kappa has to learn how to act in the new world, all while growing up. Oh, did we mention that the kappa is himself a child? At the same time, the film examines how Koichi and his family handle the introduction of this foreign entity into their lives. They treat him like something of a pet at first, with Koichi giving him the name Ku, until Ku starts speaking and the whole family realizes they must learn to treat him as a person rather than an animal. Summer Days with Ku has its charming moments of childlike wonder, which allow us to step into the shoes of Koichi and Ku. In this way, it's a pair of dual coming-of-age stories, which juxtapose the past with the influences of the modern day. This makes sense for Keiichi Hara, a director known for working on such family-friendly properties. At other times, however, Ku is a remarkably dark and gritty project. For instance, the film opens with Ku witnessing his father's murder at the hands of two disgruntled samurai. Here, the film pulls no punches, favoring instead to show the entire bloody exchange in full. Once Ku reawakens in the modern day, he has to contend with being thrown into a completely different landscape. From our perspectives, Ku's actions can sometimes be a bit jarring, like when he eats Hitomi's beloved pet snail. Taken this way, Summer Days with Ku oscillates between family fun and bizarre uncomfortability. For this reason, we cannot wholeheartedly recommend the film as a heartwarming experience for all ages. However, we could easily argue that this disparity in tone is tentative of the history and the mythos around Ku's species, the Kappa. Without continuing on in terms of the film's plot, we thought it might make sense to here examine what kappa are within the pantheon of Japanese yokai. Feel free to continue with this video without worrying about spoilers. Our aim here is to help bolster the understanding of viewers with regards to where Ku is coming from, whether you're going into the film after this video or you've already seen it. The kappa is a small, bipedal yokai, which somewhat represents a human child and whose name actually means river child, and who bears some major distinctions. First, they have slimy, scaly skin reminiscent of the amphibians we all know and love, like froggos and salamanders. Sans scales, of course. Additionally, they have a unique piece of headgear, a plate which must be kept moist at all times or else they might perish. Being that these little guys resemble amphibians, you'd be right to assume that they prefer watery habitats to land. In this way, one would find kappa residing in the many waterways of Japan. The dish on the kappa's head could be thought of as something of a fuel tank. When emptied, it doesn't mean that the kappa will immediately die, but instead that they will feel drained of all energy and may die if left in this state for too long. It only makes sense for this reason as well that kappa generally stick to water. Another defining characteristic of the kappa is its profound flatulence. We say profound because these little guys sport three whole buttholes, tripling the amount of farts that a human of the same size might produce. I don't know about you, but if you've ever been around a gassy little kid, you might relate in thinking that triple the gas would be overkill. In the video game, anime, and manga franchise Yokai Watch, the in-universe kappa species, wall kappa, is portrayed as being extremely embarrassed by this constant stank. And in Summer Days with Ku, we see Ku utilizing his fabulous flatulence for swimming. 
In keeping with what might sound like a bad mythological fart joke, Kappa are notorious for being pranksters. Though not always in the kindest of ways. You could almost say Kappa are the genesis of the attitude It's just a prank, bro. See, while other yokai, such as the kitsune, are known to dupe humans into doing what they want, or just for the sake of screwing around, Kappa have the added issue of possessing a collective streak for violence. Kappa will kill and eat livestock and even pursue humans so that the Kappa might eat the human's bunghole. I am Cornholio! I need TV for my bunghole! Once again, we see Kappa being trailblazers, in this case through eating ass. Cow's guts and human buttholes aside, Kappa are known to have a love for cucumbers, arguably their favorite food, as portrayed in today's film. You may have seen reference to this for yourself if you've ever visited a sushi restaurant, which offered a kappa roll, whose primary feature was cucumber. Speaking of cucumbers, it might seem like we've given kappa a bad rap with how vicious they can be. In fact, it's believed that leaving cucumbers as tribute to these feisty creatures can lead to blessings from kappa in the forms of bountiful water for crops, and in some lucky cases, friendship. As we see in Ku, this sometimes takes the form of playful sumo matches, the kappa's favorite sport by far. Theories on what animal may have inspired the kappa vary greatly, thanks to the diversity of species in Japan. Claims have been offered that the slimy boys were misidentified Japanese giant salamanders, turtles, the now extinct Japanese river otter, or even monkeys favoring a dip in the water. Monkey. The Sogenji Temple in Tokyo would beg to differ, offering up their alleged mummified kappa arm as evidence of the cryptid's existence. This arm actually makes an appearance in Summer Days with Ku as a major plot point in the second half of the film. While different evidence seems to exist for each of these theories, none of them entirely explain two other kappa attributes, their abilities with medicine and their language skills. First, according to legend, some of the older medicinal practices of Japan were passed to humans by kappa with a keen sense for healing. In some cases, the kappa had to be tricked into offering their medical secrets, something of a tit-for-tat on the part of humans mischievous enough to outwit their small friends. On the other hand, turtles, salamanders, otters, and monkeys have yet to be observed speaking Japanese. The kappa is one of the rare yokai with the capacity of learning human speech. This means that, as we see with Ku, kappa can bridge the worlds of humans like Koichi, animals like the family dog Osan, and yokai like the spirit at the inn. They're so capable in this regard, in fact, that kappa have adopted a number of Japanese social conventions. If offered respect by a human first, kappa feel obligated to respond in kind. This can get kappa in trouble, however, when a human bows deeply to a kappa who must match the angle of the bow. As you might imagine, this can lead to the kappa's head dish spilling all over the ground. The human then has the option of demanding allegiance and help from the kappa before refilling its life force. As you can hopefully see, being that kappa are one of the most famous yokai alongside tanuki and kitsune, there is a wealth of information to explore with these frisky river-dwelling toadies. Whether they're depicted as mean-spirited, playful, friendly, polite, menacing, or awkward, kappa are a very nuanced species. This is thanks to the multitude of stories which have centered around them over the centuries. As we see within the film, the humans of modern-day Tokyo seem to think the world is as it always has been. The descendant of the samurai from the film's opening even states that all this kappa business simply cannot be possible. Ku, meanwhile, sits perched atop Tokyo Tower and laments how there remain no quiet places in this world. In a way, the film offers this as something of an invitation to look to our past and learn from the stories of old, both morally and spiritually. Summer Days with Ku is one of the latest in this long lineage of kappa storytelling, effectively displaying both sides of the equation. The film can be off-putting at times and charming at others, thanks in large part to how complex Ku and his interactions with Koichi's family are at any given point. That being said, Ku can be an odd movie to say the least. While not all fans of Keiichi Hara's work or Kappa will find Ku appealing, it remains an impressive film in how deeply it explores the Kappa mythos, which will no doubt be appealing for yokai fans and those new to Japanese legends.